Eventually, I got to Birmingham and my friend, CO, was there to meet me. I was housed in Winterburn and a next of the university hall reserved for first year students. I was lucky to share a room with a Nigerian student, Mobola Lucas. She became my close friend and I called her Bola. She had been in England for a number of years and knew her way around. She, like me, was a first year student at the university. Since she was reading art subjects, she had to travel daily to the university at Edmund Street. The zoology department at Egbaston, however, was conveniently close to me. At the University of Birmingham, there was a small band of West African students. I was the only African female student in Edbaston. Bola and Fahu Cummins from Sierra Leone were at Edmund Street. The male students, also few, were CO, Yawe Sushi, Boy Doku, and Apem Krang from the Gold Coast. Mens, later the mayor of Freetown, Amara, and Vincent from Sierra Leone, and Thomas Lambo, Olujimi Smith, and Isaac Ene from Nigeria. The men were medical, dental, and engineering students. In the zoology department, I found that pure science students, no matter the subject they were admitted to pursue, studied physics, chemistry, botany and zoology in the first year. In the second year, they selected two of the four subjects and at the end of the third year, there was a stiff examination and successful students pursued the honors degree course in a single subject. Unsuccessful students finished at the end of the third year with general BSc degrees. I had been admitted to study for a BSc degree in botany, but I soon switched to zoology because of the tremendous interest that I had built in the subject under the exceptional tutelage of my zoology teacher, Dr. Simpson at Achimota. However, I still had to do botany as a second subject to the general BSc degree standard. I did not mind. I liked botany also, but not as much as zoology, but I enjoyed the course. It was useful understanding the structure of plants and following the changes from unicellular forms through mosses and ferns to flying plants. Whatever their size or structure, isn't it remarkable? Though that plants grow and reproduce themselves and spread in some incredible ways, I find it quite uncanny how seeds ensure that they produce more of the plants from which they came. Seedlings germinate and grow into plants in amazing places. In a little dirt on a rock, jutting out to sea, in cracks between frequently trodden concrete pavements in city, high streets, even in a little soil inside a discarded pod of another plant. Our silent heritage maintains itself in some amazing ways. The honest BSc degree course in zoology was quite intense and there was a lot to learn, but that did not bother me. Once I developed an interest in a subject, it was total and I would dig deep. The course covered the entire animal kingdom from protozoa to the vertebrate. I enjoyed following the development of complexities and tried to understand the principles of evolution, which at the time had caught my interest. It was fun and I enjoyed studying various aspects of the theory. I remember often tracing the similarities as well as the differences in the functions of various organs in different species. In the degree course, Histology was emphasized as a means of understanding the structure of animals. I like histology, staying sections with their textured cells and tissues to me were like minuscule pieces of art and identifying the cells and tissues in sections was like doing a jigsaw puzzle. The greater mystery for one was that 
cells so closely placed retain their individual identities even as they were performing specific jobs. My preferred area of interest was parasitology, which I found most captivating. So in addition to the set course, I also read about and followed the stories of many parasites. Let me share a bit of my favorite subject. Parasites have complicated life cycles. It seems to me that the life cycles have been continuously devised for their protection as well as for the production of infective stages and to make sure that they reach appropriate hosts so that other generations of parasites may follow. The life of parasites appear to have evolved to serve the sole purpose of reproducing more parasites. I concluded that parasites are ingenious and imaginative as they are sly and clever. I wanted to understand better the sneaky methods that they adopt to achieve their aims. In fact, after graduation, the zoology department arranged for me to visit a welcome laboratory to learn about some parasite intermediate hosts before I returned home. In the zoology department, one of my lecturers, Dr. Roberts, had been a medical biologist in Kenya. He was a parasitologist and I learned a lot from him. I was lucky also to have Professor Otto Lowenstein, who had done a revision of a zoology book by Parker and Haswell as a lecturer. And I was privileged to be taught biology by the brilliant and charming Professor Medawa. During the zoology honors degree course, we had two field trips, both of which were very instructive. The first was to Malam Tan. Many years later, my daughter Ajwa also had a field trip to this unique ecological place with quacking box and an amazing array of plants and animals. It was at Malam Tan that I saw the live cercaria of a fluke for the first time. I picked up a snail from the waterlogged ground and put it in a test tube, intending to identify it later in the lab. After a while, the water in the test tube started getting cloudy and upon the closer examination, I found that cercaria were exuding from the snail. Even now, I can remember my excitement at watching something that up till then had only been a drawing and part of the description of a life cycle in a textbook. My second trip was to the Isle of Man for an introduction to marine biology. We had to travel by boat from Liverpool. My sailing record on this trip was a repetition of my first days aboard the MV Accra from Takrade, except that it was much worse. But I wasn't the only one who suffered. As I found out later, Someone in the department documented what happened. What happened because I received a photo of myself with one of my lecturers, obviously as bad a sailor as me, sitting side by side on deck, leaning against the wall and looking thoroughly miserable. The Isle of Man, with its tailless cats, was an interesting place. However, we were there during the in-between time when in England, it was not considered cold enough to have the indoor heating switched on and I was uncomfortably cold all the time. There was a day marine trip on a research vessel which was supposed to be a treat for students. With my poor record as a sailor, I was glad I was not one of those selected for the experience. I remember though that I spent time observing creatures in the pools along the beach where there were masses of scallop shells.